Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Ferris Makes Emulators. This is episode 36, Bug Squashing Part 12. And I think we're going to find some good stuff today. Uh, for those of you guys who haven't been following, um, what we've basically been doing is fixing a graphics corruption bug in Mario Tennis. I will show that really quick here. Graphics looks fine. Go into the menu. Bang, that sucks. Go back and more graphics are corrupted here. Uh, a lot has been going on for that, but I've basically been able to isolate when it happens to the point where I'm able to instrument an emulator to say, yep, this is when it's happening. I've instrumented our emulator, and I've also instrumented Midnaffin uh, to see what is happening. <laughs> and we found a difference at the end of last last week's episode. So this is, com this is a tool called Beyond Compare, um, and it's literally just comparing text dumps, uh, which is of just like a high level of what's going on here. Uh, so we're watching a specific memory location. We're also checking for when the graphics compression decompression routine starts and ends, and then we're checking uh, when interrupts start and stop. Now, what I'm going to do, whenever we have or whenever we're inside an interrupt, I'm going to start logging the program counter. Um, and the reason is because here you can see the difference. There's a couple differences here, mostly due to the timing, which shouldn't be significant. But here we see. When the graphics gets corrupted, we have this decompression routine that starts and ends a few times. And with Mennafin, it'll start and end, start and end, start and end. And with ours, it starts and ends and then ends up writing to this one particular variable in memory, which ends up causing graphics corruption later. And so somewhere in here, the path has diverged. These are actually really in sync for a lot of this, which is a pretty good sign, I think. Um, but yeah, somewhere they diverge, and we're going to find out where that is. So I think this is going to be a pretty exciting episode. Pretty stoked about it. Uh, a couple things before I dive in, though. Um, if you guys are going to Evoke, which is a demo party in Germany, you can go to evoke.eu to check that out. Uh, my demo group, Logic Coma, is actually giving a live performance on Saturday night after the competitions. Uh, we'll be doing uh, audio stuff, mostly led by Hoffman and Wobble. And then I'll be also doing some visual stuff on stage as well by sort of tweaking our demo tool. I'm going to add MIDI to it and hook up some controllers and stuff. I might actually do some of that work on some of the upcoming demo scene streams because I really got to do that stuff. I got to I got to get on that now. Anyway, that should be really cool. I'm pretty stoked about that. So wanted to announce that on the stream. Um, anything else before we dive in? Don't think so. So yeah, <laughs> let's get started. Nice pun, Mad Moose. I refuse to repeat it, but nice pun. <laughs> By the way, how do guys in the chat? Guys and or gals or anything between or separate or I'm not good at how that works. <laughs> Mad Moose, Skeleton, uh, Metal Voids, Repnop. We see Creek Pot, Dark Second, Jacob Mishka. How's it going, guys? So yeah, so um, like I said, this is literally just comparing text dumps of the emulator. So for example, I can, this, we build Manafin, set it to not redirect SDDIO, run it on this ROM and yeah, dump the outputs. And then in ours, the exact same thing, going to out.txt and then comparing these. But before I run these again, I wanna dump the program counters um, whenever we're inside an interrupt. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that in our emulator first. Um, so this should be pretty easy because at some point, yeah, we detect when the interrupt, when we're inside the interrupt or not. Uh, in this case, we also like, we went so far as to check if we're in the inter interrupt and decompressing. I don't think we have to do that here. Um, we'll just do, uh, screw this stuff. <laughs> is an interrupt. And the reason why is because it'll just be easier to instrument in the other emulator, which I'm not as familiar with in terms of the code. So this should make that straightforward enough. We'll print out more data than we need, I think, but that that's fine. Um, yeah, here. Uh, uh, mess something up here. No worries. So we'll get whether or not we're in the interrupt. And then the last thing I'm going to do here 
is before it runs, if we're in the interrupt, actually it steps here, so we'll do it here. Then we're just gonna dump the PC for now. We'll start with that. Uh, and I think that should do it. So that's it for our emulator. So we'll run that really quick. Went through a couple menus. Oh man, that's slow. Woo! Come on, go, okay. <laughs> we should have gotten what we needed from that. All right, now we're gonna do the same in Minaf and I wanna see how big that file was. Do it this way. Yeah, now we got a lot of stuff here. <laughs> oh man. But this is correct in terms of the stuff that we wanted. Okay. <laughs> we'll start with that. I think it's going to be fine, even though it's a lot of stuff. Uh, then we'll do this in the other MU, which, first of all, we need to, yeah, we have whether or not we're in the interrupt. We also actually have whether or not we're in the decompress routine. So I might actually end up uh, only printing that when we're in both, but should be fine enough to just capture this state and then print out the PC there. So to do that, um, we need a place to store the state and I'm not that familiar with this code, but I think if we just do it on cpu.h, we should be okay. In fact, honestly, I could just make this a global variable and that would be fine. In fact, I think I'm gonna do that to be honest. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. If I recall in C++ extern bool here in the header, so we don't get that boolean in a bunch of the files and then we'll just, yeah, define where it is in the CPP file, I think. We'll even do the same naming convention. Hello, Ghoster. Hey, Duro2, Sockwar, how's it going? I think this works. I totally don't remember. It might have to make that static. I totally don't remember. Anyway. And then here, here it prints out the PC. Uh, I think we're fine to do it right here though, but we'll see. Um, And we should be able to do minf and printf. And then I want this to like exactly match what we have in the other one. Uh, yeah, so just do PC here and then we'll do 0x uh, this. And this is going to be RB get PC. And this will also be ridiculously slow, I think. Which is fine. Probably going to be faster, though. happening okay <laughs> all right so what i expect to see now is like half of this is going to be diverging whoa okay 
I'm right here. <laughs> Where we start seeing a lot of divergence here. Like in little spurts like this. A lot of the time it seems to be, this is very different. But this stuff is what I expected. Bad moose, yeah, exactly. If lucky, like, only need to run it once. We'll see. We'll see how lucky I end up being. But this is this is like exactly how I expected the diff to look here. But what I want to find is where the decompression started. So actually, since I have both states anyway, I'm actually just gonna do both, like we did before. Just just seeing how much text there is I'm, I'm gonna do that uh especially since we basically already have this here uh so do this don't care about is an interrupt we only do the is in interrupt and decompressing there and so to, to, to catch that we need is decompressing and then we'll do this one so here we'll do both because it'll make I think it'll be easier to just redo this than to to go and find that thing um oh yeah I also did this which is kind of nice just in case let's put that there um and so we need this and this And in this case, actually, yeah, we'll never, this, these will never be interleaved the wrong way. So this is actually okay to always check this. If is compress is decompressing, that's, that's correct. We'll do the same thing here. Yep, looking good. All right, so now we do the capture again. So what I like about this is is I normally don't like to compare that much against other emulators like this close, but just because this is such an isolated case, I feel pretty good about it. <laughs> oh, skeleton. This doesn't work. It'll be the scrub button. You'll notice this is a lot faster now, by the way. Yeah, this should, this should work. Yeah, so that was a lot faster to load now, which is good. Uh, and then we're only seeing this. And right here already, we see a difference. We see an interesting difference. Yeah, so it's always we get to this FF-F805BE, and then it diverges. C4 in one case and C0 in the other. And then this other stuff shouldn't be significant. Most of these differences. It's specifically these ones here that we see, which is exactly what I wanted here. Where we see decompression started and ended, and during decompression we had an interrupt. It matches until this PC here, and then it diverges. Okay, so just from this, 
Um, F5805BE. I want to look in my notes, which I need to find again. <laughs> um, one second here. Because uh, I had all this stuff dis disassembled already previously. And I want to see what instruction is there first. From there, we can look at the registers and what may have affected this. Unless we just see something super obvious. But I don't quite expect that. So here's a few note files. And I know because they're called w WTF something.asm. Uh, I'm guessing WTF4 is also relevant. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and again, this was FFF805BE, and it's a branch. All right. Okay. This is already really interesting, because what this is checking here is this condition here, inner pending reg and one zero is not zero. So it may be our interrupt pending register whose value is different. Which might be concerning. <laughs> yeah, and then it either goes to C0 or C4, which is exactly what this does here. Okay, and in which one does which? Yeah, so in Menefin, it always goes to C0 in this case, and in our case, it goes to C4. So if it goes to C0, then it'll skip this, go down to label B, which does this stuff. Oh, that just is the end here. Otherwise, in our case, it goes here, and then jumps to this routine, which would update the music, if I recall correctly. And that's this big routine that we started digging into, which checks that variable and stuff. So... It seems like the interrupt pending reg is what's differing here, which is interesting. So what I want to do next, hey, it's loading. I think um, I don't just want to start printing all the registers here, but I might do. Well, okay, so we know we always hit this path here in this case. And we also know this is R10. I could print the registers here. H. Karayan, is Rustral Boy more accurate in your opinion than Menafin? Uh In a couple areas it is, but in, in, in other areas it isn't. There are parts of it that is that are right now. Um, and definitely parts that are not. I would say, as a whole, Menafin is, is probably more accurate currently. But yeah, I think... Um, particularly, I want to see R10 here because this is what this is going to branch on, particularly this bit of R10. And that's nice to be able to isolate that. So I think what I'm going to do here... Oh, no, it moves R20 into R10. That's correct. So let's let's print... Let's let's go to here. When, when we're at this instruction, we're going to print R10 and R20. Let's do that. I think that's the best way to move forward and not just blow up the output. So, yeah, I think that makes sense. So let's do that. Um, if the CPU.reg PC is this, uh, we'll do a couple lines of this. Um, R10. And that's, that should be 10 hex, if I recall correctly. Oops, this is a function call, not an array here. And then we'll do R20 as well. Just to be sure, I'll check my notes there.
I actually don't think those are hex, now that I think about it. Um, I think it's actually that. Hey, Domko. All right, so I think I think this will do it here. So let's go ahead and run that, and we'll see see what's going on here. Ah, oh, Duru two, that sucks. Okay, I'm just gonna see the output here. Again, we see basically the same thing here. Yeah, and here we get our 10 and our 20. Now, interestingly enough as well, our 10 only has this one bit set, which is kind of interesting. And our 20 has some, okay, that's a bit weird. Oh no, right, because it moves our 20 into our 10 and then ends our 10 with that specific bit, which, okay, so that actually looks really good then. This is what kind of what we should expect. In fact, I'm, I'm even gonna do that again with the output reverse for these two just because that'll match more of the data flow in the code. That should make it a little bit easier to read. <laughs> it's a great suggestion, Ripknob. Yeah, depending on, on the screen, this is a uh, hard mode in Rush Jewel Boy. Yeah, because these, these are specific individual bits that are set, including this one, which appears to be the one that we're branching on, and that's why this one's isolated here. And I'm guessing this particular bit is not set over here, which would be interesting, to say the least. Um... But yeah. Uh, so yeah, so now we'll do this exact same thing in the other emulator. It's gonna be in here. Get the same address. And we'll do, yeah, again, our 10 and our 20. In the opposite order. And how is it doing its ops here? Or it's, excuse me, it's GPR regs. Okay, so we have get GPR or get PR here, which this looks to be exactly the same. We'll try that. Uh, 20. And we'll do get PR 10. Try that. <clears throat> oh, that's Eatman Skeleton. Yeah, the actual colors. Yeah, me too. I like red and cyan better than red and blue. I'm guessing in 3D glasses, it may not make as much of a difference. In fact, the cyan might actually not work very well in 3D glasses, to be honest. But it definitely looks better on its own. Okay. So here we see the difference in these in the values of this register. So I'm pretty again. I'm pretty sure this is just reading straight from the um, from the interrupt pending register. And here we have a lot more bits set than Minnaffin. particular this one bit is never set here it's but the 8 bit is set i wonder what that is just going to look at a few of these oh 
Oh, I changed mine back to hex as well. Or sorry, back from hex. Mine's not using hex either. Yeah, some divergence here. This shouldn't matter. But yeah, definitely seeing that one bit there. Um. Yeah, this this is the the particular start of display frame bit that I thought it was gonna be. Uh, interestingly enough, what are these other bits? And also, I also want to check some other documentation to double check that that is what that's what that should be. Um, now, I'm pretty sure that is the bit that I was messing with, and that's the one that's so that that <laughs> uh, this is actually frustrating because that particular bit was the same one that was giving me issues with. Um, uh, space squash. Uh, but I'm just going to pull up the text scroll here again, as that's our most convenient piece of docs for this. Um, let's see. Interrupts. This one, start of frame processing in this case, which was our um, start of display frame, which is something I got from another thing. Uh, interestingly enough, I want to see what these other bits are. In particular, we had the, the four up here and the eight down here. Uh, so that four is, I think, going to be... Actually, let's look at that eight beneath here, which is start of drawing. Um, it will be kind of interesting to see the timing in Menaf and to see how they're doing that. Uh, and then this other one here is going to be uh, the f eight here is going to be 15. I think it's drawing finished here. Now, if we look at the uh, code here in the VIP in our emulator, um, then there's, there's, some particular code that I want to look at here. So I think it's here. Uh, the cycles function, which is going to tell it to run a, a certain amount of cycles. So it just runs this loop every 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 CPU cycle. Um, and so what it does is it has this counter, which will count up to how many clocks there were until the next quarter of a display frame. So we split each display frame into four individual quarters. Um, and then when that uh, reaches the display frame quarter period, we reset the counter and then we um, match on. Uh, yeah, so that when the clock counter goes out, then we match which of those corner quarters that we're in. So on zero, we start the f we do a frame clock. And I'm fairly certain this is the thing that does this. Start of display frame here and then it will raise the interrupt if that's the case. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? Yeah, so we did that. And so, so in the first frame, the only thing we do is this frame clock. So it's going to do the start of display frame. If the display control is enabled, we're going to begin the display process. What does that do? Yeah, it just sets display state to idle, which makes sense. Because then in the second one, we actually do the display where we dump the video out of the sink. And I, the picking these was kind of arbitrary actually, because what I'm basically doing is sort of making the the assumption that um, the drawing. So the video hardware has a drawing 
uh, mechanism and a display mechanism. And the display stuff is taking the stuff out of the frame buffers and putting it into the scanners, the eye scanners. And the drawing is taking the graphics data from VRAM or like the graphics data from OAM and, and the screen memory data. And it, it populates VRAM by actually drawing the contents of the, of this, excuse me, of the left and right screens. Um, so the, the drawing period can actually take like a variable amount of time. And I do something similar to what Manafin does as well, where we basically just assume that it's, that each drawing period for the left and the right screen is going to take a quarter frame. And that's why we divide the, the frame into four quarters. So in this one, it looks like I used the last two quarters to actually do the drawing. And then I use the, um, yeah, the first one will start display. The second one will actually do the display. And yeah, there's going to be a bit of tracing here to remember when it actually raises these signals. But now one thing that I find a little bit curious is that this, this one has this 8-bit set here. Now again, that's going to be a start of drawing here. Right? Yeah. So interestingly enough, it does start drawing like mine does, or at least it is on this period. But then the other two here, oh, that's actually kind of interesting. Why does mine mark drawing finished and start of drawing? That seems wrong. I wonder if that's actually what gets out of sync and maybe some other logic branches on that. Not sure, but it looks like we're going to have to at least adjust the timings here. I kind of don't want to, I kind of want to see if I can just adjust this without looking at Mednaven to see if we can find and order these that actually makes more sense than what we're currently doing. Um, I think that's what I would like to do. Uh, so where, yeah, so begin left frame buffer display process. I think this is where we actually get the stop drawing stuff. Um, yeah, the hardware definitely resets these flags. In fact, what I actually do to get these flags is I don't set the state and then reset it later. Uh, in my implementation, I actually have this different, whether or not it's drawing or whether or not it's displaying. And then I pull the flags based on those states. So when it actually reads the, um, reads the status register, um, Ugh, where is this? <laughs> Not drawing control. Display control. When it reads these, we actually see, like, is the display site idle or finished? Then we have this. Or if we're displaying the left frame buffer, then we get these. Uh, so it actually, like, rebuilds the bits based on what it's actually doing in these other, like, with this display state variable. So, so the weirdest thing to me is that I ended up creating a state where we had, again, what are these for again? Start of drawing, start of display processing, and then drawing finished as well, which is, that just seems wrong to me, regardless of <laughs> what we get here. Uh, so I do the frame clock, uh, which again is going to do this. Now there's, the other thing about this is that it's, it's totally possible that we're going to be slightly out of sync with Midnaffin, but still correct, if that makes sense. Because if, if Midnaffin does the same thing where it just like splits up the frame into four parts, it may be that our initial state will cause ours to be in one of the quarter states that would have corresponded to a different quarter state in Midnaffin. So we may like always be out of sync, but the hardware would still be acting correctly in both cases, if that makes sense. And we would have to do like really specific hardware tests in order like to be able to figure out exactly how these are switching on the actual hardware um which actually might not be the most difficult thing to do now that i think about it <laughs> because i think we could set this up and just read out those register values and just like 
figure out a cycle for those. Now that actually, so now that I mention it, which one the what the hardware starts in actually would be hard to test for because like, oh no, I guess we could do that right on system startup. As long as we figured out like compensated for if there are any cycles where the CPU has to spin up. Ugh, it's it, it, it'd be a mess, I think, honestly. But getting at least at least doing a hardware test to figure out like what given a set of hardware conditions, what are the different values of this register over time? That could actually be testable. Anyway, I think think though, just adjusting this we can sort of come up with something. Uh, but I kinda gotta refamiliarize myself with what's going on here. Um so I, I Basically, the reason I bring that up is like the start of frame thing could happen on zero or it could happen on one, two, or three. And as long as the other sort of states are adjusted to make a correct cycle, I think we're going to be okay there. And we may not match what Menafin does there exactly, but but like we'll get combinations of bits that I think will make the code behave correctly, even if it doesn't match Menafin. That's that's what I'm thinking here. And the and then our diffs wouldn't be as useful, but we would be able to fix the problem. That's that's what I'm thinking. And that would actually be fine. Yeah, I think that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so I still want to do the start of the frame processing on zero here on this cycle. And because that just makes sense to me. And then in this case, it's also going to start the display process. Now, interestingly enough, when I actually look at this, um, So we, we've decided that because of the start of display frame, we're going to raise that interrupt. But then here, if the display is enabled, we're going to begin the display process. And particularly, this needs to put the display into idle state. And then, yeah, we might get a game clock, which is something else. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, here we have when it does the frame clock. This can't be right here. Yeah. In this case, we're getting the start of the game frame. We're getting start of display frame. And those, those I can imagine happening at the same time. That makes sense to me because it's at the beginning of a frame. Um, and the display process would bring that to idle. In fact, I think the way I did this is I did the first one would just do the game and frame clocks. The second one would do the display. The third one would finish the display of one and do the display for the other. And then the fourth one would do the drawing, maybe? Or did I mean for the drawing to happen here? Because what's interesting here is we're getting... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here, at the beginning of the frame... Okay, no, this actually makes sense. Because if we drew right away, if we drew right as soon as the frame started, that could make sense, I think. <laughs> if we did <clears throat> if we did the first quarter, we draw into the left frame buffer, and the second one, we draw to the right. And the last two cycles, we display the left and the right, which is probably actually what this is going to do here. Um, or perhaps not. Perhaps it Wait a minute. The frame before display process. This is kind of one of the things that's not that pretty here. Yes, yeah, so here we display the left frame buffer. We'll start the right display process. Yeah, because this is where the left frame buffer is displayed. This is where the right frame buffer is displayed. Then we're going to end on this cycle, and then it should also be idle in this cycle. In this uh, yeah cycle of the <laughs> quarter frame cycles I'm talking there. Uh, yeah, display state finished. Where did it do the drawing, though? 
where was that sequenced in the frame? So the frame clock here would have then drawn at the beginning of this, I guess. And then here we have this logic here where it's going to either regular pending drawing finished. Interesting. Drawing finished, I feel like, shouldn't happen if the drawing's disabled. Although there may have been a reason why it did that, actually. <laughs> In fact, the more I think about it, I actually think I did have a case here where a drawing finished would like have to have happened before when a frame started or else one of the games didn't work. I think that might have actually been the case there. Which would explain why I did it this way. Yeah, self so reg drawing control enable. Then we either start the drawing process or we're done here. Uh, for the drawing process, we do state as drawing. We begin drawing block. So where do I, how do I get the, because I'm pretty sure there's bits for drawing left and right. Yeah, we have this here actually. drawing state is either drawing or it's not. Oh, that makes sense. It doesn't, I don't think it draws the left and right frame buffers separately. It displays out of the left and right separately, but it, but it draws to both at once, I think, and that, that actually would make the most sense. So, so in that case, it would make sense if I used sort of distributed the, the four quarter frames so that we would have, yeah, one where basically no drawing or display is happening. This would have been the display of the left. This would have been the display of the right. Or actually, this would have been drawing here. Display of the left, display the right. And then this one is like idle. Now, I wonder if instead we do like idle drawing display display. That sounds like it would make more sense. Which one did the, what was this eight bit again here? This was uh, start of drawing actually. So, hmm. You know, what if we did it this way? Wait a minute. So another reason why this may be borked like this is not if we set it internally, but if one of these interrupts happened and then it, and then that particular bit was never cleared, that's possible. I don't think that's the case here, but it might be. Um, it's just so consistent though. It's a bit concerning. Let's try something here. By the way, I'm totally prepared for a long stream. <laughs> we're moving offices at work, and so uh, we're actually coming in all later tomorrow so that the movers have time to do their jobs overnight. So, <laughs> might be a long stream today. Anyway. I, I like that this does start of game frame here because yeah, it's game clock. So I, I like how this frame clock thing works in this game clock thing. I feel like those should happen at the same time. But yeah, maybe we shift all these other parts so that the start of the frame 
Like there'll be a period where you just get the start of frame flags and then those will just stay on their own and then we'll do the drawing display display rather than what I currently have, which is like start of frame, start of drawing, display, display. That <laughs> sounds good to her too. Hey, little like some text. Just to be sure, this was start of drawing and frame processing. Yeah, and that would make sense that those are done. And then, yeah, the drawing finish is kind of weird that we have that there. But that, again, may have been a bit that wasn't cleared or something. Because it, it doesn't look like there's a case where I set both of them within the single frame. Because we have one or, one or the other here. Uh, although at the end drawing process. Oh, no, I did that there. Interesting. But yeah, I, I think I'm going to start just by shifting these around a bit. I think that's what we'll do. And this is also, so self.display here is kind of a misnomer. This actually means to output the frame buffers the contents of the frame buffers into the video sync. I do this here right when display starts for the left eye um, because then the everything should have drawn by then for this frame. Uh, so that's kind of why I do it there. And then sort of as the hardware is going to sort of simulate scanning out or simulate the time that it takes to scan out the data, uh, we just right at the beginning of that, just output that to the frame buffers. That would be... It should be correct to do that. There are, there are going to be cases where while the while the hardware is scanning out to the displays, the user could write to the frame buffers and we'll miss that. Uh, we would actually have to emulate the scanning process, um, which, yeah, would require a lot of knowledge about how the scheduling for the VRAM works, among other things. Uh, we would need a very low-level understanding of that memory bus and uh, and the timing. And I don't think we'll need that. But yeah, I think I think I think we're on the right track here. Or or wait a minute. Now I'm actually second guessing this. And the reason is because we do get start of drawing here. What if we shift start of frame processing to the display? Maybe that makes sense. You know, another thing we could do here, it's really quick. So we know that this is doing move R20 and R10. So another, like where else is R20 used here? Here it checks this eight bit, which is whether or not it's gonna be drawing. So that means that could be relevant, especially if this jumps to here. So in fact, if, if it's both of these bits and it's the fact that those are conflicting, maybe that's the problem. So let's let's just try doing that. Let's try shifting start of frame processing to, um, to where we start doing the display because maybe that makes sense. And that would at least be a pretty easy thing to, to change here with the timing. Um, let, let's try that and then we'll do it here instead of when, when we have the frame clock. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be here. No, it's here. Actually, it's all of this. <laughs> uh, begin display process goes to idle. Oh, we actually do want that, I think. And then, yeah, we begin these and these. Let's do that and we'll move particularly this start of game frame. No, sorry. Start of display frame away from the frame and game clock and we'll move it to the here when it starts displaying here. And actually I'm gonna do this. And then yeah, we don't need to do that here. Now I think 
That might make some sense. So let's just try this. Let's try this. We got different corruption? <laughs> Oh, now we're very different. So like, yeah, I'm I'm so certain it's not going to be something that stupid, to be honest. <laughs> I've looked at this code so many times. So many times. So this, yeah, this may be progress. It may not be. If, if we look at the register, it's interesting now that this... So we still in the decompression routine are getting this one flag set here, which is somewhat interesting. Um... Gonna do something really quick here. Yeah, the, the flags themselves are actually cleared from the software, not from our implementation for these. Like we set the interrupt flag and then uh, usually by reading the interrupt pending and then writing back to the interrupt pending register, uh, those flags get cleared. Um, Well, I did core. I want to start programming. What languages should I learn first? Yeah, that's a really broad question, man. <laughs> I would say find a project you want to do and try and learn the uh, whatever it might take to learn that. It's That's a really hard question to answer. Um, I'm reading the wrong one. Chat is helpful as ever. I'm looking at the display control, which is not what I wanted to look at here. Because <laughs> particularly interrupt pending, that this is what this is. That's correct. 
So that's another place where these diverge. It's kind of interesting. Six O A. Ah, I don't. That's significant, actually. Yeah, because this actually started another interrupt. That's what happens there. Eventually, we hit this again, though, which is kind of interesting. Just thinking a bit here. I actually think I was thinking to adjust this a little bit, but it might actually be worth reading what Manafin's doing here, just to see see what how they transition between states in the different quarter frames. Vip dot Palm to pimp, how's it going? Got brightness cash. A lot of this is not gonna be that relevant. So some stuff here is a little bit different. Uh, the timing in Manafin is done a little bit smarter, I think. Like, so what I do is is I after after the CPU steps X cycles, uh, all the hardware is notified that X cycles just passed, X cycles of time. And so what I do then is in all the different peripherals, I, I loop for how many cycles pass and just simulate a cycle. Now that's a bit more straightforward to do it that way, but it's not very efficient, I think. Um, Particularly, uh, what, what a lot of other emulators will do instead is they ask all the hardware, when does your next event occur? And an event is going to be something like basically a state transition. So the CPU's next event will occur um, usually like in zero cycles because the CPU needs to run another instruction when it steps or in however many like X cycles after the current CPU instruction will take to execute. Uh, and then the other hardware, like the video hardware, um, its next event will be the next transition between these quarter states, for example. And so then what you do is you ask all the hardware when your next event is, and then you run the minimum number of cycles um, until the next thing's event. And so a lot of them, so you take sort of larger steps most of the time. Um, and a lot of the time you don't, you do less logic, do less like branching and stuff. So it's a little bit more efficient, I think, but it's, I think it's a bit harder to wrap my head around, to be honest. I would like to play with um, refactoring Rush Tool Boy to work the same way at some point to see if there's like a, a noticeable speed improvement there. But I'm bringing that up now because we need to keep that in mind here. Um, now, the other thing is they use a lot of register names that come from like official documentation for these registers. They're going to be a little bit different than ours, but that's fine. Uh, J. Louise, could you recommend a C++ book? I could not, to be honest. <laughs> I did not learn C++ from books. And I'm not saying at all that you shouldn't, because I think you totally should, but I don't have any to, re to recommend. Ah, uh, sorry, Skeleton. I'll add you to my whitelist here. Uh, that one. How oh, was the Rust book? Nice. <laughs> uh, 
Ugh. Skeleton, you are worthy. I just haven't added you yet. So I, I, I have a white list rather than a black list. Which is safer. That should be fixed. Okay. Game hack. Ew. Okay. Um... Yeah, it's display control here. Or sorry, XP is drawing control and DP is is display control. That's what this is. This is, yeah, here's the inner pinning here. Reads and writes aren't going to be that interesting, I think. Well, it'll be the end of the current instruction or the start of the next one, Skeleton. Like, it wouldn't really... I think that's just a matter of definition. I don't think either way is better. In fact, they'd be the same region <laughs> if it's the start of the next one. Yeah, I may not have explained that that well. But anyway. Um, I think it's this one, VIP update. Instant display hack. That sounds good. This is the drawing block. This is the uh, as it scans down the columns of the screen. So this is its drawing. It's what this is doing. Uh, we also get the drawing end here. Okay, so here's something interesting. By the way, and XP end. This actually only does drawing when the drawing is actually finished. I still feel like I had to set that in some other cases, but maybe. Maybe that was wrong. In fact, if I just search that. Okay, 
Okay, so this actually only happens here. Drawing block. And all of this. Yeah, then whether or not display these regions here. Yeah, so here it does the frame start and the game start within the same frame here that I think we're going to want to do or yeah that makes sense to me yeah because frame cycle is something else this is um how many display frames it takes for it to have a game frame which is a weird hardware quirk that I don't want to explain right now um And then if the drawing control is enabled, then it resets these drawing counters, which will then tick down, it looks like, and then, yeah, draw to the different frame buffers. That makes some sense. Um, it resets the game frame counter here because of this. That also makes sense. Uh, so here, what I'm seeing, by the way, is that if the display is active, we get the frame start thing. And I actually know that that's incorrect <laughs> for sure. Um, so here's here's kind of the issue with also reading some of this MedNav and stuff. I know right now that this right here is not correct, that the, the frame start interrupt is allowed to happen when the display is not active. A few episodes ago, we hardware tested this, and the reason why we did that um, is because uh, I gotta fill my head with a lot of context here. Um, yeah, so Space Squash wouldn't boot because the hardware is dis the display hardware is disabled on startup, uh, and then it waits for the this particular interrupt to occur without ever explicitly enabling the hardware. Midnaffin gets away with it because they incorrectly start up the hardware with the display hardware enabled. So with, with that in combination of having this condition, they get away with this. In fact, let's actually try something here. Let's do this in Midnaffin and let's see if they get graphics corruption bugs. Because if they do, then reading through this code isn't going to help us. <laughs> uh, okay. What do we get here? Oh, I probably accidentally typed a K somewhere. There we go. Yeah. Uh, where were we? Right, does it make sense, guys, why I'm trying this? Because because I know that this is actually incorrect in Midnaffin. We, we hardware tested that part. <sighs> okay. So the reason why it doesn't bug in Midnaffin is actually because of things that are incorrect in Midnaffin.
Yeah, that's exactly what's happening here. Cause, cause let me let me show you what happens when we when we let, let me show you something. Cause I'll do I'll I'll exactly describe this with Mednafen what exactly what we avoided previously. So one of the things that Mednafen does is is it's um, DPC TRL. It starts that with two, and we know that that's not true. We hardware tested that. We know that that's actually zero. So if we run this in Mednafen, it's going to work. So th this is this is one of the reasons why I say Russell Boy is in some ways more correct than Mednafen because there are, there are things like this <laughs> that make Mednafen not actually correct. So this will start up just fine if we run Space Squash. I'm not going to output to the thing, whatever. If we run Space Squash here, this will actually not boot. See that? Remember when we had this bug in my emulator? This is what started this whole thing, right? But we know that that should boot, right? And so it fixes that. And again, we hardware tested this. We totally hardware tested this. Is that, I uh, will do it here. Display control, display enable. Isn't it? I can't remember. Here, display active. If we don't do this check here, so the frame start always fires at the beginning of a frame, which again, we hardware tested and we know that that's the case. Then Space Squash will boot. And it does, right? So we know this. And I'm super glad that this works as I'm explaining this first try because again, that's just like validation that this is how this should work, guys. <laughs> Which is really interesting. But again, if we have those exact same conditions and we run Mario Tennis, we will see very similar corruption to what we see in our emulator. And I bet if we, if we uh, inspect the registers, we may even see that it was closer to what we just had than I thought. So we get some corruption there. And if we, let's check this. Yeah, I guess now we're pretty out of sync in terms of the cycles. So maybe we won't see this very nicely, but. Yeah, maybe this is crap. But, <laughs> but my point here again is that this is stuff we definitely hardware tested. And it looks like there's not going to be some big secret MNF and that's going to explain to us why this works because it works due to hacks. Because I guarantee you this, and this is... Man, I wrote all that like blog post about this too the first time I debugged this. So let's reset Minaf into what it originally did. And we'll see no graphics corruption. And then I'll show you in uh, Rust Jewel Boy, we'll create the same conditions and we'll get rid of the we'll get rid of the corruption that way. And Space Squash will boot. However, we know it's not correct because we hardware tested that. So here we have no corruption. And again, if we go into Virtual Boy, we'll do mod.rs. I think we still had some changes here. I'm just going to undo those. Um, here, we're going to start with the display enabled, which is here. Uh, where is it? Display enable. True. And then the other condition. Start a display frame. We only raise this when the display is enabled. Whoops, I just rebuilt my nothing. That's fine. But... Skeleton is the goal to run games or be closer to the hardware. The goal is to run games by being closer to the hardware. <laughs> Otherwise, we haven't really contributed anything interesting to the emulation of this platform, to be honest. But yeah, this will work now. And it totally does. So. 
<laughs> oh, that's so annoying. Here's here's what I'm happy about though. We we've recreated exactly the same bugs in Menefin. Like super predictably. <laughs> um the bugs are still probably related to the transitioning of these specific bits. Like they they kind of have to be because we've seen at least when these differ. Um, that bit seems to be what's causing it. Because even even when we so I went in and we found that one memory location that seems to be whether or not sound is enabled. And when we saw that when our emulator differed from Menefin, we saw that in our case, when that interrupt fired during decompression, the interesting thing was is that that interrupt actually wrote that variable again, which would then later cause the corruption. So something in the interrupt was different that wasn't based on the value of that variable coming into the interrupt. So it totally could be the transitioning of these specific bits, especially since we've seen that that branch jumps right over the code that, that, that is problematic. And when Menefin is working properly, it skips right over that code and it doesn't have graphics corruptions. Although it does that because... <laughs> Um, because it thinks the start of display frame doesn't fire unless the frame's enabled, which again, we hardware tested. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so basically all we've gained is that Menefin isn't actually more correct than us in this regard. It's just that because of the specific, um, the specific way in which it works, that is not necessarily accurate. It does actually mean better game compatibility but it's not accurate and we know that <laughs> and that just bugs the shit out of me. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to take a break for a couple minutes, grab a drink of water because I'm thirsty. And, uh, yeah, I'll be back in like five minutes.
just a sec, guys. I'm ordering myself from some food because I think it's going to be a long stream. So <laughs> just a sec. Yeah, okay. So I just ordered some food, <laughs> and I'll have to step away when that gets here for a bit as well. But, yeah. So I'm actually, during during this little break, I, I'm not that angry. I wasn't flipping tables or anything. Really, I was just getting water and ordering food. <laughs> so I wasn't thinking that much about the problem. Um, Kind of wanted to think through that out loud on the stream. So I'm... <sighs> I'm thinking about sort of ways to test this and I'm kind of thinking a couple things. So we were able to, in a simple hardware test earlier, um, sorry, there's some interesting other, uh, 
<laughs> emulation talk in chat. I'm getting distracted because it's cool stuff. Um, uh, 656, you should check out, um, oh, what's the guy's name? Michael Style. I don't remember his GitHub, but he has a thing called um, Perfect 6502. It's actually not perfect. There's a couple bugs, but it actually simulates a netlist uh, in order to emulate a 6502. Anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah. So here's, here's the thing. Uh, comparing against Menafin didn't really reveal anything particularly interesting other than, other than these bits that we already knew were problematic are still problematic. <laughs> um, so I'm just kind of thinking like, how else could we sort of get in and test this? Now, one of the things I'm thinking of, actually, to be honest, is because we saw that, like, when these, when the hardware will sort of, video hardware will sort of transition in and out of different states, that scheduling might actually be fairly interesting, to be honest. And I wonder, I wonder if it's possible for us to sort of set up, set up a couple tests that will, like, <clears throat> that we could run in the emulator and on the hardware that could do something like, I don't know, wait for a certain state in the video hardware, like sort of sync up with the video hardware and then just watch it as it changes states until it hits that state again and run that in both contexts and see what happens. I think we'd get a little bit of variance in terms of the timing, especially because one of the things that, like I mentioned earlier, the drawing hardware can sort of take an, it's, it's a deterministic amount of time depending on what you're drawing, but like we treat it as a constant time in this emulator for simplicity. And I, th I'm, I'm pretty well convinced that for the library of games that that's going to be correct enough. I, I, I'm not too worried about that to be honest, but we would need to come up with a way to test that that would take that into account and make that be okay, if that makes sense. Um, and sort of more be focused on what sort of states is the hardware transitioning through and what are the different bits that are enabled and disabled throughout different periods of the hardware or of the, like as the hardware is sort of cycling through. Now, what I would most like to do, honestly, is if, if I had the perfect development cart, what I would do is I would, uh, and it had, I would, assuming it has something like serial, I would honestly just, have it run in a loop and just sit there and just dump out every value uh, of the status register from the hardware. But I don't think we can do that on the actual system currently. Um, I don't know of any way to do that. I just thought of a way to do that. <laughs> it wouldn't be pretty, but we could actually use the sound hardware to output specific bits. Maybe. If we watched one bit at a time, we could do that, but then we wouldn't get them all together, and that would suck. Unless we did it, like, serially. So, like, if we sampled it a specific offset. And then we would have to write some stuff to analyze the audio output and get that out. If just looking at a few bits, that could actually work. Oh, I don't like that that would work because <laughs> it makes me kind of want to do it. Um, yeah, that would be that would be a bit complicated, I think. But I'm just wondering if there's... Dirtu says, can you write to save RAM? If we... If, if we restricted how much data there was, I think the flashcard I have does have save RAM, actually. So that's a good point. That's a pretty good point. So if, if let's just say that I sat there and reset the timer or something so we could measure how much time goes by roughly between state changes. And we just sat there and watched that register and every time we got a state change, we would timestamp it based on the timer and then output it to the save RAM. That could be a, f a pretty valuable test to at least get the data. From from there, once we got the data, 
we could we could get similar data from Rustle Boy and compare them with the diffs here, which I think would be a pretty decent way of doing that. Given we could set up a known hardware state that's going to do things like drawing and stuff. What I'm what I'm basically hoping to get out of it though is to see particularly like the drawing and the display bits. I would really like to see sort of how those transition throughout a frame, if that makes sense. In fact, we could even do this starting at the start of the game frame interrupt, for example, or starting at the start of, yeah, game frame would probably be the most interesting one there. Um, and again, just watch that register. In fact, actually, we could we could use the game frame as a way to start and stop it. And we could, we could only, we only should need one frame that draws stuff in order to just see how this changes. And then just, again, sit there in a loop and just watch every change it makes. Cause there actually shouldn't be that many changes here. There shouldn't be there. <laughs> there might be, but I wouldn't imagine there being that terribly many. And then again, yeah, we could write those to save RAM. So if, if that were the route we took, we would we would make a hardware test that the first thing it would do is draw stuff. It would it would draw something. Uh, it wouldn't need to be anything complicated, just a couple tiles or whatever. Just so we would make sure that it actually goes through the drawing states. So we would need to set that up. When we got that working, we would need to do the recording, run that on the hardware, get the actual data, in fact, run it in the emulator first to see if we like can sort of get the right data and then run it on the hardware and sort of compare the data. They would be different in a lot of ways, but I think the transitions would be similar enough, I would hope. And if not, we can make them similar enough. And then like, I think the end goal here is, yeah, I, I mean, writing it as text on the displays may be okay. I, I worry about the amount of data there. Um, I think save RAM is, but, but, but yeah, that is actually kind of what I'm after here though, is like, can we get, um, like the end goal here I think is, is specifically a test that would do exactly that though. Like, like watch for certain transitions that it would expect in, in a loose enough context that it would, the looser timing of the emulator and the more accurate timing of the hardware as long as it transitioned through the expected states both scenarios would be correct and then it would display on screen if that were correct or incorrect and that would give us something that we could literally test in the emulator by like for example a unit test would be instantiate the emulator um, load this rom run an emulation time for two seconds which again doesn't take two real-time seconds it takes you know as long as it would take to simulate two seconds of emulation and then literally just check the screen contents and then we would have a reproducible test uh, both on the hardware and on the emulator but I think I think that's what we would want to test and I think that's how we would do it I think that's it see you later rep knob so, so actually, Mad Moose, yeah, it, it would actually be that. Like, record for a couple seconds and then write something on the displays. In particular, it would write whether or not it passed this test or not. I think think that's what we want here. And we should also see it fail in MedNaf. It should be kind of funny, but yeah. I don't know. I, I, I really don't want to antagonize MedNaf in that much. Like, MedNaf is obviously a really cool project. And I just want to get that out there. Like, I don't mean to shit on them. It's just that it's it's not the most accurate emulator. It's just one of the more compatible ones for sure. Make an oscilloscope simulator on the display, <laughs> then we wouldn't see the changes in time. Or I guess I guess if we if we did it such that it would do like the oscilloscope modes where you have like the uh, uh, the the trigger states and then capture and then it would sort of display those. That could be funny. Might actually be fast enough to do that. That would be interesting. But I think think that might be more work than what I described. But I like that idea. <laughs> Uh, Dark Second, weren't there demos included in the dev package? There were, um, and in fact, using one of those as a starting point to draw something would actually probably be a pretty good idea. So yeah, I think...
just I, I just know this is going to be a bit of work, so I'm just still sitting here thinking if, if that's going to be a good idea or not. Um, trying to poke holes in it in my head. I guess the worst case, if we went this route, is that we would end up fixing things that don't fix this problem. And I can't really imagine anything other than that happening. So I think... I think this is a pretty good strategy, actually. And the nice thing is, too, we can actually do it without ever en enabling actual interrupts because the interrupt pending register will still have its bits set even if the... Um, even if the interrupts are disabled. And that's actually ideal in this case. Like we would wait for a specific, the game one to be enabled and then start recording and then wait for it to not be enabled again. <laughs> I don't think Blarg did any test ROMs for the Virtual Boy. I don't think, I don't think, I haven't seen any test ROMs of this caliber for Virtual Boy to be honest. But if if this works, I, I actually wouldn't mind making a little test suite for Rustle Boy. <laughs> because like we have CI and everything, why not use it for that? And it would be kind of nice if we're doing some hardware tests to do regression tests on that level. No, nah, skeleton, we're just discussing stuff still. Haven't actually done anything. <laughs> How much save RAM does this cart have, by the way? That that that'd be the next thing to check before dig, diving in here. Um, it's the Flash Boy Plus. Is the cart that I have. Again, thank you so much. To uh, oh, Planet VB logging man. Thank you so much again to Richard Hutchinson for sending me one of those. That was awesome. Um, just have to remember how big the save RAM on this thing is. Yeah, I mean, sure, they'd be integration tests. That's, uh, yeah, that, that is correct, actually. But I, I'm more just, I think regression test is actually the, te the word that I'm looking for there, specifically. Well, yeah, so Dora 2, uh, I could do that in the emulator, but... I, I need to know how big it is on the hardware that I have on the test hardware. Otherwise, it's not useful because if we can't run it on the hardware, um, then it wouldn't work. Then, then we'd be back to speculation again. So the the original Flash Boy at least didn't have save RAM. Can't remember if mine if the Flash Boy Plus did or not though. Need to find some of this stuff here. Hey, Dino Colin. It's it's not SD card base. It's a there's a USB thing and it has a ROM on it. It's a, but yeah, I don't I don't think it bank switches for that.
my if if I if I made a new cart, if I had so so Daniel Colin, uh not too much progress made. <laughs> we did some diffs against Mednafin and realized that the the branch that it differed on was based on again these these bits uh of these interrupt bits that we knew were problematic anyway and just kind of ended up coming back to the fact that Menafin works because of a collection of things that aren't wrong but make it work correctly anyway or, or sorry that that aren't correct but make it work correctly enough to run the games anyway <laughs> I need to find Spiritu, thanks for the follow. Apparently some people are claiming Flashboy Plus has save functionality i don't remember this i need i need to know how much it has <laughs> um Honestly, you know what? <laughs> I'm not actually seeing how much how much it has, but let me let me pull up the tool to to flash this. I think is actually the way to do that. Because actually what I should probably do is just hook it up and pull the save RAM off and see how big it is <laughs> if I can't find the manuals. Ah, oh, good point, Tomko. It might not actually be available over the USB. Let me let me see. So I've, I've got the loader here. Let's just see. This is this is the stuff we gotta figure out now before diving in too deep. On this episode, a Ferris goes over there, and it's not even on fucking camera. Yeah, okay. Got connected, which means we got that, at least. Oh, dev? I don't know what that means. I see big B. Does that mean eight kilobyte? That would be nice. And to be honest, I hadn't actually ever tried to pull stuff off of this. Just just written stuff to it. And that may mean that we're not able to do this. Because I mean, I already don't see it here. Uh. 
<laughs> cool, Tomko. Yeah, I'm also seeing mixed hour, mixed uh, responses here. Hmm. And I mean, that's that's fine. Yeah, it looks like I can I can only write to it with this loader at least. Hmm. Okay, so then recording this stuff and writing it to the save RAM is not gonna work. But I kind of I kinda of like Mad Moose's idea <laughs> to kind of do like an oscilloscope like view of the states we're looking for. At least just to see it, because like we need we need to observe how the hardware is transitioning through these states, which is gonna be kind of hard actually, because <laughs> uh, actually actually it would it wouldn't be hard. It would just be delayed by a frame, because basically what we're gonna have is the hardware doing the drawing routine in order to draw the output that we're gonna read, <laughs> which which is fine. There's a chicken and egg problem there for the first couple frames, but it should stabilize after a while. I would imagine. Because if because we're going to end up, it's going to be like this little feedback loop that's eventually going to draw the same thing every time. If it's stable. <laughs> yeah, 100% verify that the result matches the hardware. That's It's going to be tough uh, because there's so many little timing things that that we know are not correct in the emulator currently. Um, but, but again, if we could see, like I'm most interested to see if we can get the same sort of states that, that it goes through at least with roughly the same timing, at least, at least to be able to compare what these different emulators do, that would be really rad. Um, so yeah, I think, I think maybe we do that. So particularly, I want to take the like we have we have the interrupt pending register, and that's a 16-bit register. And over the course of a frame, we want to see which bits are set and not set over over the course of a frame. That would be it. And in fact, we would get something that looks like exactly like an oscilloscope. Uh, no, Duratu, no such uh, card exists as far as I know. Flash Boy is about it. Um, so the other thing is we do have floating point, which would make it a lot easier to do the timing stuff because then we could we could figure out like how many timer ticks were in a frame and how many timer ticks happen on each state transition. So what, what I'm basically thinking is as soon as we, here's here's kind of what I'm thinking here. Uh, observe start of frame, which is probably gonna be start of game frame, and then we're going to start recording. Where we're gonna grab the. Um, the interrupt pending register. And actually, particularly what I'm interested here, so so this kind of this kind of way of debugging with this sort of oscilloscope view would work for like any isolated register. I'm most interested in the interrupt pending one for now because I think that's what's going to that's what seems to be what's what this stuff is branching on. Um, although, if we could figure out kind of how these state changes in a nice way, 
Um, then, yeah, we can still sort of make tests based on that. But I'm thinking is sort of grab the interrupt pending register uh, when we start recording, and then of course like set recording state. We're gonna also reset the timer. Uh, small ticks. Um. Or you know what? We honestly don't need the timer if we're just going to sit there in a loop. And in fact, the timer might just be annoying because it's going to be, the ticks might not be granular enough, which is actually possible. Uh, we're going to reset our tick counter. We're going to use our own, how many times we've gone through this loop is the timer, for example, which should be the fastest thing we could do. Uh, or maybe I'm, maybe I forgot about the timer intervals and maybe that's not the best way, but that would be a good enough way for this, I think, because given that we know how many of these ticks happen per frame, this would be reliable enough to, to place where the events happened on a timeline. Uh, so we would start the recording, uh, loop, it's going to be something like this. So we're going to, yeah, grab the register, uh, if reg changed, append change to, yeah, some change list. Um, and the other thing we want to do, yeah. This is another thing that we're going to want to do here for this particular register is we're going to want to write the value back. Otherwise, these these bits will never get cleared. So we'll see when they're set. And so actually, maybe that's maybe that's fine that they never get cleared. Yeah, let's actually not do that because I think we'll be OK there. By the way, my food is being delivered. So any minute now, I'll have to step out. But um yeah, we'll do that. We'll do append change to list. Fine. And then we're going to start a frame. And here we're going to end the recording. And then plot. State changes for different bits. Uh, I don't think so, uh, Pedroia, because I think I don't think it's going to be that general. I think if we constrain this to just here's the output, here's how one register changed per frame. I don't think it'll explode in scope, so I think I think we'll be fine there. So, I, like I, I think there's a, I think there's, I think what you bring up is an important point in terms of like there is a line to walk there where we don't want to spend all the time on like the perfect debugger that would help us find everything because we would spend all of our time on that. But I think in this case, it's pretty sensible because the scope would be so small. And the only, the nice thing about this is that this would be general enough that we could watch any register, which would be pretty cool. Um, as long as we watch one in isolation, like we would rebuild the test ROM for different ones. But I think, I think, I think that makes sense. I think, think this is within that line like there's also the sort of debugger ui that i made that was that also worked quite well and wasn't terribly much effort uh, at least proportional to the gain but i think i think this is good because i think i haven't really done any tests that were like this and the nice thing about this too is we can sort of i can kind of simulate this and do some like I could invent an opcode in the emulator or something just to test this to see how many state changes there might be. Um, but I really, actually, I don't think there's going to be that many. I think this would actually just work. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Yeah, I think... I think this makes some sense. And again, the irony here is this. In fact, here's what we can do here. We'll do display frame here. And we'll do this. So, so we'll, we'll, this, this is actually really cool. Um, that was, that was too many of these that I wanted. <laughs> uh, let's do that. So here's what I'm thinking. If we set the system up, so there's a, there's a thing called display frames, which is every time the display will update the stuff in the uh, um, on the scanners. And the display frame happens at 50 milliseconds, like no matter what, that's always going to happen. But we have something called the game frame, which will determine how often the buffers are flipped. And the reason why you need the hardware to know about this is because the hardware needs to always scan out of the right frame buffers while you're updating the others. If we set this frame cycle register to two, which means there's gonna be two display frames in a game frame, and then every game frame will last sort of two frames, we can record the first one and then draw during the second one, the second display frame. And what we'll get then Uh, in fact, here, yeah, this should still work. Yeah, I think this is actually going to be pretty cool. Uh, here we need to... Um, do this. Uh, my food's here, so I'm going to be right back.
on this episode of Ferris Eats Pizza. Okay, but really, the more I think about this, the more I think it makes sense, given we could do the rendering stuff properly. And I think if these states change slowly enough, I think we could do this in a pretty nice way. So here's, like I'm thinking about the plotting in particular, that this needs to be really fast if it's gonna be less than a display frame. No, I did not eat a whole pizza. I actually haven't started eating. <laughs> um, but I'm just thinking about this stuff. Um, particularly, I'm thinking that we could do something like quantize state changes to number of screen columns. I'm talking about like chars. And then literally just fill in the ones that are ones or like, yeah, have like a low or a high graphic and just fill that in. <laughs> Not grandis. I, I really don't like that shit. It's uh, it's Domino's. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think this could work. In fact, honestly, I could just write zero or one because I'm pretty sure that this, uh, pretty sure, hold on, let me see here. Uh, what the hell? One sec. V B D E Modern feat of over engineering. But it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, so this is that Harvard test we had earlier. Do you guys remember? Um, and I literally just hacked this, uh, bare bone example to just contain what we needed. And I think, yeah, modifying this is going to be more or less what we want. Although I am honestly kind of having second thoughts about starting this now. Um, seeing as it is 10 o'clock, I could go for another couple hours. I think this might take me more than two hours, though, to be honest, to get all of this set up. Um, so I might just dig in here a bit and then make that decision as I go. Because I, I, I need to know, like, how much does this give us if I just use this? Like, do we already have a font in here? That kind of stuff would be really, really nice to know. Um... But I, I do think that this is what we want to do. I think this will be a good strategy. And maybe I implement this next week. Like, I was really hoping this stream we would kind of just be diffing code paths and the PC stuff and just finding something interesting. Unfortunately, we didn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, the more I think about it, the more I think that I don't think I'll be able to pull this together terribly quickly, but quickly enough that I could fit it into next week's stream probably. Let me see if the other samples here. So I had a couple demos and stuff. This 
displays a splash screen, which is actually quite nice. Yeah, there really is actually isn't much on the hardware to, to do for this, which is pretty cool. Like a couple other of these. Yeah, I might have to type in a little char set by hand. <laughs> Wouldn't be the worst thing, though. Because um, as far as I know, it's just this these 16 bytes. Because we have two bits per pixel. And then... Yeah, two bits per pixel, which I believe is two consecutive bytes. Or it might be... I think that's how it is. For... A total of eight lines one two three four five six seven eight yeah and then so this would be one character um yeah we don't need objects just need the bitmaps again particularly it's going to be this stuff set up the different worlds because we do this and then a dummy world which is what this was if i remember correctly Okay. Uh, I think I think it's coded that way in Minafin because under certain assumptions that I initially made, that would kind of make sense, and it does actually work for game compatibility. I don't think it's worth contacting contacting them to be honest, because I don't think there's anything like really fundamentally interesting in why it's written that way. To be honest, I think it's just like it makes the games work. Because there's there's other clues there that that wasn't that you know accuracy is not their primary concern and and that's fine but that's not the emulator that I want to make if we have the opportunity to actually make some improvements here okay this even does a real time clock here it's kind of cool there's even a font I wonder how extensive that font actually is. Let's actually build this demo here. Because I might be able to steal that font. Let's just count up elapsed time since the start time in seconds, minutes, hours. Uh, doesn't seem like it's doing that. <laughs> Is there some start thing I'm supposed to do? Doesn't seem like it's setting up the timer interrupt. <laughs> this does this like text box thing. Again with a font. I'm just interested in saving work <laughs> by like already having a font. This is Reality Boy, by the way. Yeah, okay, so here's a font. We could steal that. That's nice. We have message.h. That's annoying. This is clearly generated by some other tool. And looking at this, T H I S I S. No, wait, T H I S space I S. So this is actually probably two byte offsets for these things in the font which is kind of crap <laughs> yeah 
yet. But I only really need two graphics if I'm going to be doing zero or one. So I think we might be okay there. And some other graphics for like framing things. But I think generally if we just do the world stuff here, I think we're going to be okay. Like this demo one thing does. In particular, it even does this stuff through the words directly, which I which I will probably do it the same way. Um, yeah. Skeleton, yes, I will totally do a Rush to a Boy demo at some point. I just think this hardware is cool. <laughs> it's just really weird, and that's what I really like about this stuff. <laughs> so I would love to do a demo for Virtual Boy. Need to uh, probably generalize the stuff we did for the SNES tracker and kind of try and reuse some of that GUI code, especially. Like, there's definitely some work that needs to be done on that front, but I'm sure Hoffman and or Cedrix would love to be a part of that, to be honest. <laughs> um... But yeah, I'm I'm kind of thinking that I'm just really on the fence about starting this right now, to be honest. This header thing. Let me, let me do this though. Let me, uh, is there like a new project thing here? No, that's just a new file, which I guess is fine. Cause as long as you have the header and whatever else, that should be basically all you need. Just do all this stuff here. Let me actually just try throwing together a little project here. We'll start it that way. <laughs> um, In fact, if I do a demo, I may even do it in this, or at least come up with a nice way of using the tools that this comes with and the library that it comes with to do this stuff. Because I, I actually like, I think I mentioned this before when we made that test ROM, this libgccvb, I like the design of it because it's just so bare bones. Like it's, it doesn't really wrap anything. It just gives names to everything and, and like nice C ways of interacting with the hardware. And I really, I think that's the right philosophy. And the way that they've done this in two, in two pieces where they give you libgccvb, which is exactly what I just described, and then view engine, which will give you sort of a higher level engine to build games. I think that's the right way to do this. Um, I wouldn't use the view engine thing just because I would want to code that stuff myself, uh, but I would totally use the gccvb thing because it's just like register aliases and stuff. And I, I think that that's the right way to do it if doing this stuff in C. And I think also C is the appropriate language to code a demo for Virtual Boy in um, because the CPU is 20 megahertz, um, at least for the the high lo high level stuff, it'll be C. But then uh, use assembler for some of the more critical um, speed related things. Um, but yeah, let's make a little project here. Uh, I'm just making a folder here. Uh, we'll do, I don't know what we'll call this. Reg scope. That works, right? Let me do this. Kind of be annoying to jump back and forth between the stuff, but actually, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that, but yeah. Man, I'm so tempted to try and make Rust running on there, but that that's another several month project to be honest. Cuz you you'd need to do the you'd need to do all the work in bin utils to actually get like the linker and the assembler to support this particular processor. A lot of that's already been done as part of the VBDE package actually uh, for GCC, which is good enough cuz the Rust still uses that linker on a lot of platforms at least. So you would have to do that, you'd have to build a custom Rust with a custom LLVM that would actually generate code for that processor as well. So it's it's all that work that would be necessary to do. Yeah, exactly. You need the LLVM backend as well as the bin utils support. So you, like I've looked into this, <laughs> that, that's what it would take. And I think 
To be honest, I think that's all it would take if you're just doing bare bones rust, like if you just run core. Um, and then depending on a lot, a lot of the things, like you'll have to Im implement uh, malloc and some other, yeah, like really core library things. I think I think it would be cool, but there's so many other projects I think I'd rather do. <laughs> but I, I'm tempted. Um, where did I put this? Here. Let's see if I can bring this in. I add this to my favorites. How do I edit that? I want to edit that. Maybe I have to navigate to it here. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna move this window actually. That was not the thing I wanted to show on the stream. Hold on. <laughs> Just gonna get this set up. <laughs> A lot of these like folders on my hard drive, I just don't want to show. Like, I don't even know what's in there, so it's just like add to favorites. Nice. Okay, good. So now I've done this uh, little VB hardware tests directory here, and RegScope is going to be our little project. So here I can do, I guess, new file. This IDE obviously isn't my favorite thing in the world, but I think to be honest, it's going to be a shorter path to just deal with it than it would be to like set up a more proper development environment, to be honest. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and then we'll store this in that other thing. No, I did not want to call that header.c. I want to call that header. <laughs> Don't you for any Linux ISOs, yeah. Well, I mean, it's not even that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's just I just don't know what's on there, so it's like... Maybe there's an embarrassing picture of me or something. I, I don't know. Maybe there's one of Hoffman's work in progress projects. It's that kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and do... I'm just going to copy this because we should be able to get the same thing there. Another new file. Oh, I didn't realize this had edit images with A-Sprite, which I totally have A-Sprite, so that's actually kind of cool. Anyway, um, yeah. Did I not copy that? Ah, uh, where to go? Let's do this. Or my new file. Where? Here. Okay. And then here I should be able to just run that. didn't work do these have make files in them for these am i missing that would not be surprised if that were the case let me just dig in there a bit Oh yeah, there was that functions thing that might actually be all it needs. Functions and components. Those are just a couple of headers, and I don't, I don't just mind. I don't mind just copying those to be honest. Let's do that. Okay, yeah, that seemed to be mostly what it was. <laughs> Languages.h didn't like. What was what's that from? Oh, it's from assets. I didn't realize there was an assets folder there actually. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I'm just copying folders from the bare bones product into this. It looks like we're building. Oh, nice. Okay, so we have at least a project set up. Um, I'm actually gonna, no, I'm not gonna get into this because we have the backup elsewhere on my hard drive, um, which is good enough. This, we wanna do this stuff. Um, yeah, this VB display on, which we ended up sort of unrolling here. Uh, the reason being that I wanted to see that that was exactly what it was when we did that previous hardware test. So that makes sense. And it's basically this stuff. VIP interrupt we don't need, honestly. Um, for example, if we do this, we're not going to get a pink screen, I believe. Yeah, that makes sense because that's where it was actually set. And that's, that was the hardware test we did previously. Level zero. That's fine. And I, I kind of don't want to use interrupts for this, to be honest. Although, no, I don't want, I don't want to just read the interrupt pending register. Um, but yeah, we're going to want to copy the memory in here with whatever tile data we need. And I need to look up the tile data for that. And then we're going to do the set up the worlds to actually display this stuff. But I think, I think I'm going to do this on next week's stream, to be honest. Now that we've just sort of set up the project, then I have a really good place to start next week. Um, and I think we'll do that. I think we'll do this, this debugger idea there. Um, so a bit a bit unfortunate that we didn't really find anything that was that interesting in Midnaffin, to be honest. But that's how it goes sometimes. And again, at least at least we know that that was kind of a dead end, and we know that this these bits are still going to be troubling. And we came up with a way that we can sort of test these further. So I think I think still really valuable work today, but a little bit disappointed to be honest. But. Next week, we'll start working on this test, I think, and that should be good. Uh, Sunday again, back to normal demo scene streams. I'll probably be playing more with MSX stuff because I've been having fun with that. So, uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in that, that may be something to look forward to. Um, actually, though, I do need to do the stuff for our Evoke show, so maybe I'll do that this Sunday. Anyway, I think this was fun. Um, we did at least what we wanted to do today. Just didn't find what we wanted to find. <laughs> but yeah, uh, thank you guys for, for hanging out as usual. Uh, this was pretty fun. And I'll see you on Sunday or next week.